Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a science fiction horror film, Extinction. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins when the engineer, Peter, is wondering about life. He is wandering around the city. One moment, it's daytime, then it is night. A ball of light appears from the sky. Bullets rain on them, as buildings explode around them. Everybody runs away, and Peter wakes up, realizing that it's another nightmare. Peter's wife begs him to get some treatment, because he has the same nightmare over and over again, and it is keeping him up at night, as well as his wife. Peter is certain that he is capable of handling the situation on his own, and so refuses to accept help. When morning comes, Peter promises a family night to his daughters before leaving for work. He also puts a smile on his wife's face, as he agrees to have a party with their friends the next day. It is to celebrate his wife's promotion. At work, Peter notices his right hand shaking. Then, he sees a vision of himself, punching someone on the floor. A buzz and a spark bring him back to the moment. It turns out, it is from the machine he is in charge of. A moment later, Peter is surprised to see his boss standing right next to him. There is a sense that the boss is aware of his sleeping problems. To help him he suggests that he should go to a clinic, and urges him to do so. Peter attempts to dismiss it with a sweep of his hand. In return for an early dismissal, he promises to check it. After Peter finishes his work, he gathers his equipment, and puts them in the storage room. As he is about to leave the room, he notices a lamp whirring. He focuses on it. In a snap, he finds himself fixing a fluorescent lamp. On the other hand, Peter is in a hall with a giant LED screen. The news grabs his attention, as people on the screen talk about a race overtaking humanity. There's urgency in one man's voice, as he demands everyone to take action now. The next thing that happens, Peter finds himself running away from shooters. He goes to his wife, and tells her to stay put. Then, he wakes up. This time, he finds himself face flat on the floor. Soon after, Peter jogs up the street, but one glance at the sky makes him stop. Artificial lights are moving in the sky. He tries to ask people around if they notice to. However, people do not even notice him. The wife puts the girls to bed, and busies herself with painting at home. Peter enters not long after with a telescope. His wife confronts him about his broken promise, to which he explains himself. Learning about Peter passing out at work, the wife raises her concern again. He tries to argue, defending his mental health. However, their younger daughter, Lucy, interrupts them. So the mother puts her back to bed. Despite his best efforts, Peter finds himself in yet another nightmare. His eyes are drawn to a figure of a young girl, who is wailing. They are lying face up on the ground. The girl's cries for her mother's attention are audible to him. It's Lucy. His eldest daughter Hannah is also present, and guns are drawn in her face. But soon after, he awakens himself from his slumber. It's already morning. The first thing that Peter does is apologize to his daughters for missing the family night. Hannah walks out, while Lucy chooses to hear him out. Apparently, he also has to explain to the toy monkey. Before he gets to work, he tells his wife that he has set an appointment at the clinic. His wife cannot hide the hint of a smile, as she looks at him in the eyes. After work, Peter sits in the lobby of a rather fancy clinic. Another man sits not far away from him. Out of nowhere, the man asks him what he saw. In confusion, he asks the man what he is talking about. However, the man's following words stun Peter. Peter finds out that they are going through something very similar. He listens until the man tells him they are being controlled. The clinic is stopping them from seeing more of what is to come. Therefore, their memories will be erased. Just as the man is called into his appointment, Peter falls into a trance. This time, he is in front of the factory he is working for. Lifeless bodies lie everywhere, while he, his wife, his boss, and many others walk around armed with rifles. A look of despair paints on his face as he looks up. Balls of fire are falling from the sky. Peter skips out on his appointment, and heads home quickly. He informs his wife that he's thinking about something, he tells her if such things appear in his dreams as warnings to him, then so be it. On the other hand, the wife is really not interested in hearing about his predictions, and keeps reminding him about their gathering. Later, a lot of their friends come over for the party. The wife entertains them, while Peter focuses on his new telescope at the terrace. Her closest friend Samantha notices this, and tells her not to mind him. Instead, she has to enjoy the night. After everyone else leaves, Samantha's husband joins Peter on the terrace, 
It seems, Samantha instructs him to speak with her close friend. However, his motivational speech about perspective is interrupted. Immediately after he advises Peter to focus on his family, rather than the sky, the sky explodes with lightning and thunder, and balls of light fall from the sky. Not long after, a big explosion happens. It throws them in different directions. Panic rises everywhere, as they look for one another. Samantha and her husband look for their daughter and Hannah in their place. The two girls are playmates. They assume that the girls are in their place to check their new sound system. However, they are not. Peter and Samantha's husband find them stuck in an elevator. Massive aircraft with monstrous sounds circle around the city, causing fear. They shoot at every motion detected. Meanwhile, creatures from the aircraft also get into the buildings, and shoot every living being they find. Right then, Peter is convinced that his dream is coming true. This time, his wife believes in him. She asks him about what happens next in his dreams. Peter had a distinct memory of being in front of the plant. They make the final call. Those are the places they'll be going. A round of shooting makes them barricade their door first. Peter and his wife stack as many things as possible at their door. But the barricade does not last long. They run to where their daughters are supposed to be hiding, only to find out that Lucy is not there. Hannah cries as she tells them that her sister went out to find her toy monkey. Peter soon finds his younger daughter hugging her toy under the table. Tears stream her cheeks, as she is face to face with a creature. The thing has a kind of rifle, with a long blade pointed at her. Peter charges at the creature, and fights with it. The wife comes to the rescue, as she beats the creature with the telescope repeatedly. Now, they decide that it is not safe for them to stay in the building. Peter carefully scans the area, before leading his family in a specific direction. Not long after, they find themselves reunited with the Samantha family, but only after the men almost hit each other with their handheld weapons. They come to the rooftop where they can see everything. Every building is either smoking, or burning around them. Unknown aircraft continue to shoot at everything in motion. Knowing they don't stand a chance on the rooftop, Peter tells everyone they need to go to the factory. Everyone gets on a lift used for construction materials, despite some fear protests. They have no other choice than to go down. However, they haven't even reached half of the structure, when it begins to collapse. Once again, they find themselves inside the building. Peter tries to figure out the creature's gun from earlier. All the while they try to figure out how to get to the factory, as it is the safest option they have for a survival place. The wife suggests they use the tunnels. She knows the tunnels well, as she works on the city's drainage and underground system. Unfortunately, before they can finalize their plan, they lose the Samantha family. First is Samantha's husband in an explosion, then Samantha and their daughter as an aircraft shoots at them. Peter and his family need to escape. They run and hide, as he tries to figure out the creature's weapon. He finally does, at the very moment that he badly needs it. However, unknown to him, the creature's weapon is trackable for the owner. They can get out of the building, and get across the streets. However, an aircraft detects them, as they get into the tunnel. It fires at them, just as the last person manages to get inside. Nevertheless, the impact throws them off. When they get up, the wife notices a large wound on her left side. Peter assists his wife, as she guides them through the tunnel. Time passes by, and the wife asks to sit as she is in great pain. Just then, Lucy notices the creature near them. Peter is quick to react, and puts the creature down. The creature raises his arm in surrender, as Peter points the rifle at him. He quickly takes off his mask. But to everyone's surprise, the creature is a man, just like them behind the mask. So Peter keeps the creature at gunpoint, to carry his wife to the factory. Some armed men open the factory for them. Recognizing Peter, the boss tells everyone to help him and his wife. However, Peter and his daughters get another scare in their lives. The medic is shocking his wife for diagnostics, which are beyond his logic. But the boss calms him down, telling him the medics are reliable. The boss gives Peter a run-through of their plans. It comes as a surprise to him, how they could prepare for such an event. Nevertheless, the boss tells him that he'll be more surprised at what he can do. The boss then commands everyone to prepare for the oncoming breach. They need to move underground, and board the train. Just then the medic tells Peter that there's no chance for her wife. Their daughters cry, and beg them not to quit on their mother. However, the medic can only apologize. At that very moment, the creature exclaims that he can help bring the wife's life back. Without any choice, Peter gives in, despite the distrust and the boss's words against the creature. 
Now he is in a room with him and his wife. As for his daughters, he entrusts them to his boss after telling them to stay together. There, Peter freaks out upon seeing the creature cutting through his wife's skin. However, what surprises him more is what is under that skin. Electronic devices are revealed inside his wife's body. Meanwhile, the exact amount of disbelief shows on the creature's face. He cannot believe that Peter does not know who or what he really is. It turns out he is a synthetic human, or the one that should be called AI. Although still shocked by the truth, Peter follows everything as instructed by the creature, who should be called the human instead. In order to save his synthetic wife, Peter opens his chest in no time, and shares his power through a cable. After the surgery, he falls asleep, charging his wife. In his sleep, he recalls his memory. It's revealed that in the past, humans grew hate on the synthetic kind it has found out that the AI could learn more and faster. So humans plan to wipe them out. However, the synthetic race rose up for themselves, gained the upper hand, and drove humans away from the planet many years ago. He even sees a more explicit version of his daughters, crying for their parents. Their human parents were lying face flat on the ground without life. He and his wife found the two girls, and gained their trust after hating everyone with a gun. Now he knows that his nightmares are actually flashes of his past, and not visions of the future. In order for the synthetics to start anew, and not live in fear, the clinic wiped out their memories, with only a few retaining the past memories to be the storyteller of their race. Peter wakes up, and learns that humans found shelter on Mars, and lived there for 50 years. The human tells him that he always thought synthetics were monsters, who drove his ancestors away from their planet. However, after arriving at Earth now, he realizes that synthetics have the same value of life as humans. He cannot dare to take away anyone. The wife wakes up, and just like Peter, she has recalled everything from the past. After that, the human helps them remove the cable connecting them. As the walls slowly tear down, the synthetics need to evacuate as soon as possible. Peter and his wife thank the human. They introduce themselves and bid goodbye. Later, armed synthetics cover Peter and his wife as they run to the tunnel. At the end of it, the boss has to order some men to carry the girls to the train, as they insist on waiting for their parents. The train has just started to depart, when they finally come to the platform. They scream and shout for it. Luckily, they are heard. The movie ends as the train travels through mountains and rivers. Its trail hides the moment they pass through. It's great to see that others like the boss chose to keep their memories of the past, to prepare for the next battle when humans come back to the Earth. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.